I got nothing for the table. Second. 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 Any discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. We're going to resolutions. First resolution up is uh, allocating funds made available to the county suit of the American Rescue Plan. We usually have uh, pulled that off for most of other committees. I'll make a motion to vote 22. Second. Okay, first and second. Any discussion on that? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay. Next up, we have a resolution approving the plan sale and transfer of certain uh, tax property pursuits of RPTL 1166. Anybody have any questions? I'm not sure to answer them. I think there's six properties. Have a list in your book. Mm -hmm. Did you do the foreclosures and other problems with properties being sold or? No, the contract can be sold. Right. So, it's not like you do it. And one in the state. Then it will go back to the state. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, next up, we have uh, closing uh, governor <coughs> oh, sorry, resolution requesting the state university in order to amend or remove its COVID-19 vaccination policy. I have a question. Sure. What Dave gave me here doesn't match what's in the back. Which one are you talking about? The, the first resolution. The one that was you just received today? Yeah, this one here doesn't match what's in the bill. No, it, it shouldn't. This one uh, didn't get added, and it's just changing the name. And we're going to ask uh, Jeremy to entertain it. Yeah, we'll do that. So you have one that's current, and one that makes an amendment to a previous one that's been adopted. That's what you were. So they got a real problem with the first one, but I'll deal with them on the floor. Okay. Okay. All right, after we go through this, we'll approve that name change at the end. Where were we? Okay, uh, on the resolution uh, to, to amend or remove its COVID-19 uh, vaccination policy. I would uh, make that motion. I will second. I'm happy to see it here. Okay, the first and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay, next up we have an uh, opposing uh, Governor Hoka's ban on gas stoves and other new fossil fuel heating equipment. <coughs> Any discussion on that? No. Make a motion. Yep, we pass it right away. Pass it. Yeah. Okay. Everybody <laughs> in favor? Aye. Uh, Brian, I got a question. I got, you know, sure. it, 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 which, you know, I mean, we all know that it's going to be tough to stop it, but is it, can't we want to be able to be changed if there becomes a Republican governor by executive order of some sort? I mean, I, I just can't see this, you know, staying in effect for the rest of our lives. I just don't see it happening. You know, I mean, I just don't. I mean, I know I, when I lived in Rochester, I know the the housing development that I moved into at the time. It was all electric because there wasn't any more gas lines being, you know, you know, put in time. So, but that's all changed. So, I mean, are we going to be able to change this, hopefully, at some point in time? Because I know that our resolution, you know, it's good that we're doing this. I, I agree with it. Okay, I'm not disagreeing with it. Okay. Right. I'm just saying, will we be able to change that? Terry, do you, you know, have any... Well, if you as a Democrat joins with us Republicans to get a Republican governor, absolutely. So, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get, get a Republican that you know that, that everybody likes. You know, more Democrats like than you know Republicans like that. Look, anything Democrat can be one. changed. Right? You know, I just, I just want to make it possible changed. to change it later because that's what we have to hope let's, for. Let's stop okay. it from happening. Well, I don't Instead. think we're going to do that. No. Uh, but you know, I, I want to see it change later. Is what I'm saying. Well, Thank you. That's it. You do have, if I may, Mr. Chair, sure. you do have a couple concerns, though, with that. Yes, you can 
change with an executive order to a certain extent and how this comes out in the you know in the first um, how it looks like when it passes that's going to determine whether it can be executive order or not however you also really should have your majorities in your houses to back you up on at least one of them. So there are some technicalities there. Okay, just, well, I, just, I don't want to be saying, yeah, you can do anything as a governor because you can't. So. Well, well, I just hope that you yeah. get some common sense right. somewhere that we don't have to keep living with downstate Democrats. Don't know what to do. No common okay. sense whatsoever. Zero. Well, well I, I, I don't think so either. Okay, I, I'm not disagreeing with you. So you're, yeah. Okay. I, I, just, okay. uh, I did watch the, some of the hearings on this, and it doesn't have a lot of support in the legislature itself. This is uh, just something, an overreach, and it's a, uh, an aggressive plan. And, and like the, the Democrats have done in the past, they overdo it to try and compensate for what they're not going to get. And they make it impossible to achieve. Uh, and they're trying to make it a law, so it's, gonna, it's, it's, a, it's a big overreach. It's a lot. Right. We've had quite a few of the older we could see in the last Yeah, no, I know. It, it, it's, it's, uh, it reduces the credibility. About all this you know, conservation and all these electric cars and all that stuff. We had a week ago, Monday, uh, today, it will be two weeks. I had my monthly uh, commission, Kentucky Commission meeting up in the north, and uh, uh, we circulated about all the towns, small towns. We get we, we served about. 58 communities, and uh, so we said, I mean, we, we had three young people come out, I say young, <laughs> came into the meeting late, and uh, one was the uh, lady was a uh, professor down at the State University in Albany, and, they, and she had two students who was going to their practice, and they, they come up, they wanted to study the, how we operate in the Federal Commission, so we are non-regulatory, we're the only one like it in the United States, and uh, so that's where they came up, and uh, they had to wait. And uh, so she apologized, and she said, "Well, what happened was they she had a total electric car, and uh, they was going to char recharge it in Utica. And when they got there, uh, none of the, the charging stations were down. So then they had to drag the wrong. <laughs> and uh, so she got there late. Uh, and she had 35 miles left." Uh, on the charge, she got in Rome, and of course, where we were, there was no charging station. Uh, so she went to lunch with us, and um, uh, she had to go to Watertown, one of the hotels up there, and charge the car so she'd get back to off. And I, being, you know, not nice, I said, well, that's an example of regulations and mandates and all that stuff. And here in the North Country, there's very, very few charging stations. So it's great to have a plan, but when is at this point in time not achievable? You're forcing people to do things that are uh, unrealistic. So you have to say to yourself, who's running the show? Who's it was insane. Uh, uh, and that's what you see, right? They're putting they're, they're forcing the they want towns that go to electric trucks. Are you kidding me? <laughs> uh, it, it just it, it's so beyond comprehension, it's just scary. Yeah, that's all I said. <laughs> all right. Get back to that folks. We're looking for a motion on that. You hear me? I'll second. second. All right. First and second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Everybody opposed? Okay, thank you. <coughs> okay, next we have a resolution for the time of <coughs> public hearing. Relative to proposed uh, County of Oswego Local Law Number Two for the year 2023, entitled "The Local Law Allowing Eligible Volunteer Firefighters and Volunteer Ambulance Workers to Receive the Real Property Tax Exemption or the Real Property Tax Law." I would do. I move that and if you want to accept that. Sure, second. First and second. Any discussion on it? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, let's get back to, uh, we have a resolution on the sheet we handed out, uh, making such corrections and scheduling of the allocating funds available to the county of Sweden for the American Refuge Plan, certain subrecipients and beneficiaries. This is a name change on uh, how it's going to be made out for the farmer's market in Flasky to the preservation of revitalization of Flasky. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, um, thank you for considering uh, bringing this off the floor today. As we were getting through the contract stage um, of a previously approved authorization, um, the recipient brought to our attention that they have a fiscal agent uh, that acts on, on their behalf for uh, keeping the, the records and doing reporting to um, to the uh, governments on the 990 as a not-for-profit, the Pulaski Farmers Market by itself is not a not-for-profit and so they operate through the preservation revitalization of Pulaski or what they call prop uh, in the village there. So we're simply asking you to uh, authorize an amendment to a previously approved resolution and we're changing the name of the recipient from the Pulaski Farmers Market to the preservation revitalization of Pulaski. Okay. May I make a motion to do that? Second. Sure, second. First and second. Any discussion? <coughs> that all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, <coughs> we're going up to some reporting partners. County Clerk, please. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you to each and every one of you who have sit on this committee, who sat last year, who continue to sit on it, because uh, without you, we wouldn't be able to do and accomplish what we have this past year. Um, everybody should have a report. If you don't, there's some here. Um, I just wanted to hit some of the highlights on it. You can take it with me and read the rest. Um, my team, of course, uh, we have Nancy, who's my director of operations, or deputy direct, deputy county clerk of operations, excuse me, and uh, motor vehicle deputy, uh, Diane Perrell. Matt stayed down to uh, run the office for us this morning. He said he's been doing enough of these. So uh, <laughs> anyways, um, I just want to draw your attention to some of the 2022 improvements that we, uh, myself and my team, we're able to accomplish. So first, uh, we implemented a new passport photo system, which has increased our revenues and increased the efficiency for our uh, pistol permit holders, along with our passport uh, applicants, so that they can't, they won't get rejected. Because this system actually uh, uh, adjusts the photo to the Department of State standards right on the computer, so we don't even have to worry about it. It'll save people time because sometimes those photos get rejected. Um, so that, that was a good thing. Uh, the second thing we did was we procured a new uh, credit card system. Our old credit card system, my staff had to handle the credit cards, and that was, that was something we really didn't want to see ha happen. We talked to Rich about it as well. Our, our insurance wasn't exactly excited over that, so now we have a whole new uh, uh, system, kind of just like you can see at Lowe's. You can you know just swipe your card go through the prompts, uh, it also has increased our, um, not only has it enhanced our security, but it's also increased our reports so that Nancy doesn't have to jump through hoops to pull out the numbers that we need to do our uh, daily, weekly, and monthly uh, auditing. Uh, we replaced our older um, microfiche uh, reader printer. That is mainly used by a lot of our other departments here, but it was something that was running on 30 years old and uh, really wasn't efficient. We couldn't replace it. We tried going that route, but they couldn't get parts for it, so we had to buy a whole new system. Luckily, we were able to uh, swing that this year from the sale of our, uh, our vehicle that we had. Uh, that was able to um, be transferred over to help us purchase that, which actually is an integral part of uh, of not just our office, but the county departments as a whole. In the motor vehicle, we extended our office hours on Wednesdays. Uh, Diane uh, monitors that through the Oswego office. It has been a uh, you know a good hit with the customers. Please tell your constituents that we are open late on Wednesdays. It is uh, we're trying to make them uh, user friendly in our motor vehicles, if you will. Uh, in order to enhance and oversee the running of our three motor vehicles, we did uh, replace the motor vehicle supervisor which was Kathy Sharkey. We replaced her on, on her departure with um, Diane Perro, who was a 20 plus uh, year employee of motor vehicle as a deputy county clerk of motor vehicles. Um, we saved money while doing that. Uh, we've also replaced our DMV courier car, which helps uh, you know make that safe and reliable transportation to uh, bring our transactions from our dealers. We reopened our Fulton DMV we reached out to National Grid Downstate. That's one of our corporate accounts. Uh, you, when we get into our numbers, you'll see we increased our corporate accounts, 500 and some odd uh, transactions, which is a, a good deal. 
Um, and then we also uh, sell our Easy Pass tags at all of our DMV uh, locations, which for mm-hmm. whatever reason, DMV never incorporated Easy Pass tags mm-hmm. for sale of them, but we were able to uh, make it work for us. Uh, our record center, we're in the beginning stages of revamping uh, the record center and how we uh, store, you know, bring up technology, uh, increase the technology, and, and really make it more user friendly. And we're also implementing a strict state education department retention schedule so that we're uh, making sure that we're uh, destroying documents when they need to be destroyed and keeping what needs to be kept, uh, but it's all while uh, being cognizant of the room and space in that record center. Um, the flow chart is there, pretty much self-explanatory. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, the next ones are 2012 to 20, uh, well, I should say 2022 numbers. Um, not much has changed there. A few of the full-time and the motor vehicles have changed. Uh, the big thing that changed with that was we have a dealer processing center that focuses just on what that courier brings in at the Oswego Motor Vehicle. The next page, you can see our expenditures versus our revenue. Um, expenditures uh, on the first one, that's uh, you know the paper, notebooks, all of that stuff that we had to purchase. Um, next one down, you'll see our salaries and wages put out uh, with cost benefits versus revenue, and in the end, we are turning back uh, roughly $1.7 million to the county <clears throat> after our uh, salary, fringe, and Social Security. Next page is our financial summary. I just want to highlight a few things here. The money that was paid to the county treasurer was uh, roughly $5.6 million. Some of that gets spent out differently after that. Um, our clerk fees were down roughly 50000 from the previous year. Pistol permit fees were up 60000 from the previous year. Our passports are up 2800 from the previous year. And our motor vehicle fees are down slightly uh, $16,000. Um, so the economy has hit us a little bit there, but you know we're still holding our own, in my opinion, moving forward. Uh, tax redemption filing fees were up 3000 Mortgage tax is up 62000 last year. Uh, the motor vehicle use tax was down 44000 and our motor vehicle online revenue share is down 15000 I want to pause a moment and talk about the motor vehicle re- online revenue share. So right now, <clears throat> we have to hit, hit a threshold, and then we start receiving 12.75 on most transactions after that for online revenue. If this budget and when this state budget passes, probably the only good thing that comes out of it is our revenue is going to change slightly to the better. So instead of 12.75%, uh, on average for most transactions, it's going to go to 10.75. But it's going to be across the board, no online threshold. Uh, so we're looking at roughly a $260,000 increase in our estimate. Okay. So yes, we're, we're decreasing our, uh, our retention fee our retention uh, percentage, but we will increase our fees because we're doing it across the board. It's not not like we have to meet that threshold or anything. Um, I will be right up front with everybody. I, I am a little nervous over this. Uh, I'm a little nervous over the fact that if everybody can go online and we'll get the same retention fee, what it, are, it might shape the way our motor vehicle in person, our motor vehicle offices look like. I know I've talked to a few of you about this, but my question is going to be how many people do I actually need if uh, 50% of the people who are using the uh, offices go online and do their transactions. Now there's a percentage that's still going to want to use the offices and I understand that, but it's probably a discussion that I'm going to have to have with, uh, you know, in partnership with this committee of what the face of motor vehicle looks like in our county in, uh, a few years out. So. I mean, that'll be years to come, but I just want to put it out there that this is something that is on the horizon. Um, all in all, uh, $22.6 million uh, went through our office last year, and I really want to thank uh, uh, Nancy and uh, her senior accountant. Uh, they're the two. It all goes through them, finalized by me. Uh, so I really want to thank Nancy and uh, Christy, who have, uh, and Marissa before that, who Kevin stole from me, uh, that start the process and balance the books of that $22.6 million. So thank you to you. Um, next page, just some comparison. You can look at that at your leisure. Um, little chart. Everybody loves charts. We had to include it. Um, and then we get to our motor vehicle fees. You'll notice that 
Motor vehicle fees from 21 to 22 are down slightly, uh, 14,500. Um, and from 2022 to 2019, we're down 387,000 in motor vehicle fees. Um, there's a lot that changed in those four years. Uh, so 387,000, I don't think is a bad, uh, bad number um, because 2019 to 2022, it's a whole new world. So, um, last page we have is our dealer and corporate account. Um, dealer transactions were down 10,000, but our corporate accounts are up 551. We went from just having our upstate Niagara Mohawk to having our upstate and our downstate Niagara Mohawk transactions. So all the vehicles you see from Niagara Mohawk go through our office. I do want to thank uh, Diane. She was the, when I first started, I said, we need somebody to just focus on these. And Diane picked that up and ran with it. And then roughly two months after that, I said, well, why don't you become a high deputy of motor vehicles? But Diane is a, uh, have, has her finger on the pulse. She's ex-military, you know, so she runs her offices pretty strict. But at the same time, we have a lot of people that really enjoy working at Motor Vehicle now. Um, we're trying to uh, retain the employees. Of course, uh, everybody knows what our problem is uh, with the retention of employees. Uh, and, you know, we, we need to work in partnership to fix that. Other than that, that's the report. I appreciate all the support from the committee and the legislature on it. And uh, that's What's that? Is there any questions for him? Nope. Nobody, Nobody on the committee has any questions? Okay. Uh, I just have to say, uh, you know, kudos to the, uh, the Swago office. Okay. My wife was in line at the Fulton office for almost an hour waiting to get through, okay? And then she just said, you know, I can't wait any longer. Mm -hmm. She left and came up to Swigo when it was with in and out within, I'd say, 10 minutes, I believe what she said, 10, 15 minutes. Yep. Uh, do we have any idea of the length of time, waiting time, you know, Fulton versus a Swigo? Because when she walked into a Swigo, she said she was very happy. She was greeted by somebody, said, what do you need? Beep, beep, bop. She went right straight through, okay? Fulton office, I know we've talked about it many times in other committees and in this committee, how it is, it isn't run as efficiently. I don't think the workers are bad. I don't think, I think it's just something that we have to maybe look at to see what we are spending time. But I do want to say that the Swigo office is you know, very, very happy with it. Uh, and hopefully we can see it for all of us. You know, yeah, you're talking about uh, do I think people are going to start going online to get it? My wife asked that question. I said, well, she said, well, don't we still get money? You know, the county still get money. We get a certain percentage of it. I said, but not as much as if you go, you know, in-house. In, you know, in -house. And she said, well, then I'll go in-house to get it. You know, will people from Fulton that are waiting, you know, that are tired of waiting in line for yeah. that length of time, okay, will they start using the computer? I, I don't know. Sir, I really don't know, Terry. I mean, I, I don't think so because I, I don't think they're that knowledgeable as to what to do, you know, be send, you know, sending it in or even going by computer, okay? But I think that, you know, if we can work something out to make Fulton as efficient as a Swigo, it would be, I know it may cost us more, but, you know, I think if you can get more through, you're going to generate more revenue, and that's what we're looking to do at some point in time. So that's, that's all I have to say. So I want to thank you very much for what you did at Swigo. Thank you very much. That's it. So the problem we have with the whole thing is, mm -hmm. okay, I don't have enough space to put more towers up there. I just don't. Um, you know, you have four windows. The fifth window is used for the um, camera, and they need to have that. The, the one thing we did do, did you go during like a lunchtime or something like that? No, it, it wasn't okay. a lunchtime. Okay. Well, the problem we have is we don't have any space, plain and simple. So in a swiggle, they have that welcome center that that's really the cats. I mean, that that's wonderful. People love that. You walk in, they get your paperwork in order. I mean, they don't catch every person. Some people just go and get in line and get it. But they're able to get their paperwork in order before they hit the line, which is wonderful because when they get up to the, uh, up to the teller, it's in and out. Zip, bang, boom. Um, so that's number one. We don't have the space to build one of those in or in Fulton. Um, the one thing that both of the seniors in Fulton and in Pulaski do is if there's a, is a long line, 
the senior will go out and make sure that the paperwork's there. Or Diane, if she's in the office that day, she'll go out and make her in myself and check the paperwork, make sure it's in order and ready to roll. That saves a lot of time. Um, and then there are just transactions that take a long period of time to accomplish. And that's part of the problem when you only have four windows and you have maybe three there that day. I can't just shuffle people around with the limited number of employees they have. A swiggo, it's not like I have a never ending list of people, but it is a larger office and we're prepared for it. And the good thing about a swiggo is when there's downtime, they're still working because we have that dealer processing center in the back. So it's not like I'm just putting somebody there, you know, that's going to waste money or, you know, so. So there, there, there are a lot of things. We've looked at them. Diane looks at it continuously. And every day is a little different. Like this, every week, I should say. So this week, you're going to see a lot of transactions with trailers and motorcycles and things of that nature. But you're only going to see them probably Tuesday and Wednesday. When it comes to Monday, Thursday, or Friday, everybody's going to either be on their spring break vacation or preparing for it or just staying away from the motor vehicles. So there's a lot of factors that go into it. Short answer is we're looking into it. It's going to be. It's going to take some some time to figure the whole thing out with Fulton. The, the only other just uh, just real quick is that when Mike ran coming, okay, people will you know with doing their you know. DMV business mm -hmm. would rather come to Fulton yep. possibly than going all the way into Syracuse mm -hmm. or coming all the way up to a swiggle. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if we can give you more space somewhere at some point in time, I doubt if I'll be alive when, you know, they finally come here, but you know, that's you know, yeah. let's let's see what we can do it in the future to get ready for that because I think what you did in the Swiggo is excellent, sir, and I, I'd like to see it continue a little bit into the Fulton area because that's going to be a focal point at some point in time you know, okay. in the future. I just, I just wanted to say that my experience was completely the opposite in Fulton <clears throat> last month as your wife's because I had less than a 10 minute wait and I think it's just it's variable on when you hit it. But everybody goes you know mm -hmm. early in the morning at lunch and if you can hit it at a different time. So I don't think it's always busy in Fulton. So one, thing, the wait time time one thing I'm trying to do, and I don't know exactly how to do this, because I have to go through some HR and, you know, i got to talk to IT and everything. I'd really mm -hmm. like to have some sort of video camera that looks, that you can go on in real time and see how long the line is at mm -hmm. a couple of these, just to try it out and see if that will help people. Because if you're in Hannibal and you look at the line in Fulton and it's out the door, you're going to say, oh, I'm going to go to Oswego, look at the Oswego one, and there's hardly nobody in line. You're going to go there because it's half another one, half another the other. So I want to see if we can do that. Uh, there are some questions, you know, with HR and things of that nature yeah. that we have to get through. Okay. Thank you. John? Yes. So, Terry, you know how um, when you're going to renew your license or your registration, you have the option to do it by mail, online, or mm -hmm. locally? Well, people who have already have uh, easy pass tags, are they now going to get an opportunity to renew locally or are they still going to have to go through um, all when, when, like when they first purchased it? Your easy pass? Yeah. We don't have to renew easy pass. Well, you have change to. Change plates. That's all that's interesting. Well, if you change, 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 your, change your plates. No, you have to call the number or go online to do all right. that. So, but then the servicing is all still done by Albany when just yeah. add money to the account. Okay, so this is just basically brand, brand Doing new. Doing the purchase of them, yep. Okay. And Frank, I'm sorry to hear about your impending demise. No. <laughs> <laughs> so you got some bad news there, Frank. You got to remember something. From the minute you're born, you start to die. <laughs> Any other questions for Terry? Well, that's you a little depressing. I think, but I thought this was a good day. <laughs> Clock is ticking down. <laughs> Quoting songs from the 60s now. Okay. <laughs> for today. <clears throat> well, next up for uh, department reports, we have uh, strategic initiative department updates. Yeah, so uh, just briefly, as you know, we have the uh, two pots of money, internal and external. The external is the one that um, is reviewed and then brought to the individual committees uh, for their consideration. Uh, we're getting close uh, to the point where we, we already have more applications 
than we have money left for. Uh, so there has been uh, some discussion, and, and it's totally up to the legislature about potentially uh, putting a hold on taking new applications until we can uh, sort out and prioritize the ones we already have and see how much money we have left uh, at the end of that. So um, I want to thank uh, members who served on the uh, task force. Uh, it's long discussions sometimes, and, and uh, they really do their due diligence uh, before they recommend uh, things to come before you. So I um, appreciate their, their help. Okay. Any other questions for Dave? Good job, Dave. I'm good team. <laughs> Anything for me? No, actually, uh, I really I was going to go to HR when you threw that paper at me during one of those meetings. Remember that? You were mad at me? Yeah. It didn't hurt me, so I didn't go to the HR. But that's the, the, the kind of level of discussion that actually occurred during that, uh, during those meetings. It was, it was really good. Um, but it was, yeah. Anyway. It was just a spitball. It was, I know, but um, I'm glad I got, finally got to you. You're always happy. Um, so the auction is coming up. Our team with a real property. Uh, they're getting preparing for that. Um, the key date is June 9th is when it's going to be online to go to start bidding. That's the key date. But the signs start going up. We go up early April 14th to stimulate uh, interest. And then on the sign itself, it will give you the time. So if you can't remember what I said, just look at the sign. It'll tell you when, uh, when it goes online live. Um, like I said, both, both offices are working uh, uh, Vigorously, vigorously on trying to get that uh, get that ready so we can get the brochures and get us to college city to do the brochures and get everything wrong. Yeah. Um, anything on that, Corey? Yeah. Yeah. What, on the auction? Yeah. Um, no, I mean, pretty much what you said is online again, and, and uh, I don't think there's any major problems we've come across yet, so I'm sure there will be. There always is, but <laughs> yeah. one or two. So other than that, um, that's it. Uh, Mark, you have somebody you'd like to introduce? Uh, this is Louis Lombardi, the new public defender. Uh, he's going to fall under the government and courts committee. Okay. Welcome. Well, yeah, well, thank you. Nice to meet everybody. Listen to everything that's going on. Are you living locally, uh, or? Uh, yeah. I just started with Bob. Nothing. So I got to temporary place until I can find something a little more permanent. This is uh, actually this is Mr. Lombardi's first 35 minutes at work. <laughs> uh, so he's got his priorities straight. He came to committee first. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah he is uh, under contract until he's established residency for a certain amount, and we'll bring a resolution back through this committee uh, for full appointment. Uh, so um, we're glad to have you on board. It's been, since we're quoting, quoting songs, it's been a long, slow road. Uh, to uh, since we started Creative Public Defender three years ago, and I'm glad to see them at the uh, see the light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. And we have full confidence that Mr. Lombardi can build this office for us. So far, he is the office. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do have I do have interviews set up. I should have. I mean, outside of attorneys, which we're not getting any applications, I should have an office set up by the end of the month, fully staffed, except uh, with the attorney oh. show. Um, but you know, we'll, I'll work on that and we'll see what we can do. In the meantime, he will he is at, uh, occupying an office over on Bunner Street uh, next to assigned counsel so that he can uh, avail himself of Sarah Davis's expertise uh, as a citizen. And we'll get everybody his contact information. Okay. Thank you. Just let me trim if I may say real quick. The foreclosure resolution that you did at the last meeting, I really appreciate that. They actually did pull, pull it, but there's still a chance it still could be breathing with the governor signing it. So um, it doesn't look good, but NYSEC's just giving us a heads up. Yeah, it was pulled from the so-called budget, but uh, it still may, something still may happen. We still may try to pull that. If that happens, the treasurer is right. There's a lot of horse trading negotiation going at the end of the budget, and the issues that are in the pool are 
the tax foreclosures, the governor's housing uh, initiatives, and unfortunately still the Medicaid issue. And so we, we think that those are all going to be decided at the last minute. Okay. That's it. I don't know if anybody have anything else. I can end all plan. We're all set for the right motion. Right motion again. All right. Second. And first and second. Everybody in favor? Aye. 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 We're adjourned. Thank you.